15 Pro Max. Ooh, ooh is shaping out to become the killer phone. We now have a ton of leaks and rumors and in those leaks I see a trace of one main idea. 15 Pro Max is the ultimate iPhone to buy. Don't believe me? I will give you the proof. The new body design and materials will mean the most for 15 Pro Max buyers. It's no secret that the design is changing. More rounded edges and slightly curved glass. Look at these CAD files. I think that this will be an optimal balance between roundness and flatness. In a word, that's how the true successor of the 11 Pro should have looked like. According to these cats, it seems that the rumors of capacitive power and volume buttons hold some truth. The mountain holes look different in cats, and according to Quo, Apple's major supplier basically leaked the info about new Taptic engines being ordered. Also, there has been another interesting cat leak that showed a new button that's replacing the mute switch. Yes, it will be gone too. Apparently, Apple wants to change it to an action button of sorts. Something like we've seen on the Apple Watch Ultra, and I don't know how to feel about that. On one hand, the mute switch is useless, you set it once and forget, but separate action button? On CAD renders it looks fairly small to be used regularly, especially in gloves, but we'll see. To top all that, there's been a new exciting leak saying that Apple has developed a separate low-energy chip solely for these solid-state buttons and action buttons. What's interesting is that according to rumors, this chip will allow buttons to work even when the phone is off or out of battery. 9 to 5 Mac has also shared its findings. According to their data, the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be slightly thicker than 14 Pro Max and slightly narrower and shorter. Suppose most of the width difference comes from the elimination of buttons. If we look at numbers, we'll see that the difference is negligible. Most likely your hands won't even feel it. Oh yeah, and the stainless steel is gone. A photo of the actual phone's chassis shows that clearly. That's titanium my friends. You know why is that so important? Because the 14 Pro Max is a very heavy phone and titanium in 15 Pro Max is supposed to make it much lighter by 10 to 15 percent. This means the 15 Pro Max will weigh almost like the regular 14 Pro weighs now. If you still haven't got my gist, the phone will be super light for its enormous size. 6.7 inches at 7.3 ounces is not a joke. So yeah, call me excited. The same photo also shows the Type-C port. Finally, after all these years, it's happening. Type-C port on iPhones has been a butt of the joke for years and this port was and still is limiting the proness of pro iPhones. If Apple plays it smart, they will put fast USB 3.2 in 15 Pro Max or even Thunderbolt. This will increase speeds of data transfer by 10 to 20 times. Luckily, leaker Ming Chikuo has shared that all pro iPhones will have fast Type-C ports. Listen, I really need this since I'm so tired of transferring via lightning or via airdrop. Lightning is slow and airdrop often fails to transfer, so this leak from Kuo alone takes my excitement meter up to 50. Now let's get back to that curved glass I've mentioned. Shrimp Apple Pro has recently shared a video with the real glass for iPhone 15 lineup devices. From that video we can clearly see two things. The glass is slightly curved and the bezels are slightly thinner. From my perspective the curved glass is exactly what the iPhone needs because of the flat glass and sharp edges 14 Pro to me often feels difficult to use and gestures aren't always comfortable to perform. This curved front glass will make a world of difference. And those bezels, that's a nice touch. According to Ice Universe and Mac Rumors, iPhone 15 Pro Max will break the records for the thinnest bezels ever in smartphones. Ice Universe claims the bezels on 15 Pro Max will be only 1.55 millimeters thick. That's 14% thinner than on current leader Xiaomi 13. However, all that isn't the most interesting thing that makes me want to finally switch to a bigger iPhone. This year, there will be two main things, the battery and the camera system. If you thought that 48 megapixel camera in 14 Pro was a big deal, with 15 Pro, Apple is basically saying, hold my beer, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is getting a periscope camera. Yes, Meng Chi Kuo has recently leaked that the lens system for 15 Pro Max will be supplied by Largan and will be exclusive to the Max model. It is still unclear what magnification it will be, but I hope it will be at least 
5x. Five times zoom will provide the optimal balance of quality and versatility. It won't be as absurd as 10x on Samsung phones with their space zoom, of course, but at least it will be much more useful than the 3x zoom we have now. I can't wait to test this periscope camera out and see what it's capable of. As for the main sensor, it most likely will remain 48 megapixels. According to Mac rumors, the 15 Pro Max will be equipped with Sony's new state-of-the-art sensor. This sensor will capture more light thanks to doubling the saturation in each pixel. This will lead to even better low-light performance. It is too early to say, but I'm pretty sure Apple will once again claim the two times improvement in every way. The ultra-wide camera will receive a small update too. The sensor will have better aperture and capture more light. Hopefully, the new sensor will be able to solve the problem of HDR, which the iPhone can lack in harsh lighting conditions. Also, I hope the new sensor will enable 4K action mode. I know current 2.8K is enough in most cases, but 4K will surely be even more preferable. I hope to see cinematic mode in 4K 60 instead of 4K 30 we have now. Let's not forget the display improvements. The 6.7 inch display will become even more power efficient thanks to the new 28 nanometer display driver chip. This new chip will be much more power efficient and if Apple doesn't change the brightness, we could hope to get even better battery life. In terms of its specs, the display will most likely still have the same brightness, refresh rates and colors. My experience tells me Apple isn't fond of huge updates each year because upping the brightness once again will make headlines and be a big deal. Also, if CAD files are correct and better bezels do get thinner, the size of display may also become bigger. Maybe on paper it will still be 6.7 inches, but in reality it could potentially grow by a few fractions of the inch. But even if it gets better, the difference will be minimal. But there are no leaks about Dynamic Island. This may indicate two things. There either won't be any changes in size or functionality, or the new features will be so small that leakers aren't even interested in leaking them. I hope we at least get some useful software features because current Dynamic Island is mostly a gimmick rather than a feature. Oh, and the A17 will finally transition to 3 nanometers. This means slightly higher performance, improved thermals, and better power efficiency. Maybe you think that such changes won't be visible, but believe me, they will. You'll instantly notice everything, apps will open faster, the phone will heat up less under heavy loads, and the battery life, well, let's talk about it. As I said earlier, the second big thing for me this year will be the battery. Thicker phone plus more efficient display chip plus more efficient 3 nanometer A17 chip will surely equal even better battery life. 14 Pro's battery for me is enough now, but as the battery degrades, the battery life becomes worse. A regular 15 Pro may be slightly better, but I think I'm ready for a big change in the way I charge my iPhone. The time has come to switch from everyday charging to once every two days. As you see, I have big expectations of the September event. Everything we know makes it absolutely clear Apple is serious. 15 Pro Max will become the best iPhone ever, as always, with the best display, best body and design, best camera and the best battery life. To me, this is a no-brainer.